hi guys hope you're all doing well and uh, in this video i'm going to tell you how you can set up a federated identity that means how you can use adfs server with office 365 so that the authentication should be processed by adfs server and after spending around 20 minutes on this particular video i can assure you you would have a fair understanding of how to set up federation with office 365 or azure ad once the federation process will be completed a relying party trust will be created by default and i will be focusing on a specific tab named as identifier to let you know guys that how adfs decides that whether the request which it has received from office 365 or from login.microsoftonline.com is a legitimate request or not the next thing that I'm going to talk about, the claim rules that are created by default in the relying party trust on behalf of which ADFS decides which claim it has to issue. Lastly, we are going to talk about authentication flow with the help of a fiddler trace, where I will be showing you each and every process that I will be discussing in this video. And it's the fiddler trace itself which will help us to check the claim issued by ADFS to login.microsoftonline.com. So now let's move on with the process of setting up Federation Trust with Office 365. So for this, you need one ADFS server up and running. And on that ADFS server, please install the module, which is MS Online. So this is something which you can download from web, but I'll show you a very easy way of how you can get this file if you already have a AD Connect on-prem. Now, once you have this PowerShell module installed, the very first thing that you have to do is you have to run the command called get hyphen MSOL domain to check the current state of your domain, whether it is a federated domain or it is a managed domain. The reason why I mentioned this command is this is something which actually lets you know what is the list of all the domains that are currently added in your tenant and which domain you want to federate with your ADFS. The next step that we will be doing will be federating the domain. So for that, we will run the command, which is update hyphen MSOL federated domain. And this command will actually convert your domain to federated and also updates some of the federation properties of your ADFS to Office 365. Now, these properties are the list of the endpoints on which ADFS will receive the authentication request, as well as some of the details which is more over related to token signing certificate so now to proceed with this let me switch to my vm where i have adfs installed adfs service is up and running and as you can see i don't have any relying body trust for office 365. now in order to proceed with the setup as i've shown in the deck the very first thing that you need is a ms online powershell module now for that, you have to go to your AAD Connect server and navigate to this location. So since this is a test environment, I have AAD Connect and ADFS on the same machine, but you should navigate to the machine on which you have AAD Connect. Go to C drive, select program files, Microsoft Azure Active Directory Connect. Go to set of files, and this is the file that you have to run to install Azure AD PowerShell module. As you can see, it is already installed now. So the file name is administration config hyphen en. This is the file which you can copy from here and just move it to your ADFS server. Run this file on your ADFS server and PowerShell module will be installed. Now to proceed with the setup, the very first thing that I have to do is I have to run the command connect hyphen MSOL service. Now there is one more very important part which I have to cover here and that is in order to complete this entire process of setting up the federation between ADFS and Office 365, you need enterprise admin credential and the same account should be a part of local admin on this box on which you have installed ADFS service. So in short, what you need is an enterprise admin account that should have local admin access 
as well on the machine on which you have ADFS as well as global admin credential of your tenant. So these are the two accounts which you will be using. So the account with which I'm logged in right now on this particular machine is an enterprise admin as well as local admin on this machine. So now let's proceed with the setup. I'll type connect hyphen MSOL service. And uh, now I will be prompted to enter the global admin credential of my tenant. And that's what I'm doing right now. Once I will provide my username and password, I would be good to go uh, with federating my domain with this particular ADFS server. So now I am connected. And the next command that I'm going to use is update hyphen MSOL federated domain hyphen domain name and then my domain conceptswork.com the moment i'll press enter there are a couple of things which actually got completed and i'll list each of them step by step the very first thing that you have to focus now is go back to your area first just refresh the list of relying party trust and you will see a relying party trust is already created for you now as i said before that we will be checking some of the properties related to relying party trust make sure that you copy this particular value from here and save it somewhere because when i will be taking a fiddler trace i will be showing you how this value is checked on ADFS and where this value is included when the token is being sent from ADFS to your login.microsoft.online instance of the tenant. I'll go back to my relying party trust. Let's just verify if that has not been removed. Add. Okay. Let's just verify it again. Perfect. Now the next thing that I have to let you know guys is how come your office 365 tenant knows that in order to send an authentication request for a user that is coming from a domain conceptswork.com has to be routed to this particular ADFS server wherein the federation service name is active directory.conceptswork.com so this is the name of my federation service name now in order to check that what you have to do is you have to run this command get half an msol federation property hyphen domain name conceptswork.com enter and as you can see that these are the endpoints on my adfs server which will actually process the authentication this is my token signing certificate and the same information has been exported now to Office 365. So when Microsoft Office 365, it's exactly login.microsoftonline.com to be very precise, receives any request from a user that has a UPN, let's say user at the red conceptswork.com, Office 365 or login.microsoftonline.com knows that the authentication request has to be redirected to passive client sign in URL and this is the endpoint. Now why I said passive because for this demo I will be using browser and it's a passive authentication. Now the question comes that when we will check filter trace then it's not only this particular link where exactly the authentication request has been sent but there is a protocol on which this entire process works. Now this could be either WS Fed or SAML depending upon what process you have chosen to get the authentication done. And in order to check that what is the current protocol that's been used between ADFS and Azure AD, you can refer to this last property which says preferred authentication protocol WS Fed. So this command not only gives you the information which is currently on your ADFS server, as well as on Office 365, but it also lets you know which protocol is being used to complete the authentication process. So this was all about knowing what happens once you run the command, which is update-msol federated domain 
hyphen domain name. Let's go back to our deck and now talk about the authentication flow. How a user actually gets authenticated when you have an ADFS server. So the, in the real time scenario, what will happen that the user will browse or open a browser and go to the link portal.office.com and portal.office.com will send the authentication request to Azure AD and that will be login.microsoftonline.com now here exactly login.microsoftonline.com detects what kind of user is trying to log in depending upon the upn suffix so if i have federated my domain which is conceptswork.com when any user will go and type user at the red conceptswork.com and press tab login.microsoftonline.com would come to know where it has to redirect the request in order to get the user authenticated this is something which i will be showing in the fiddler trace and it will make more sense so once azure active directory knows that which endpoint i have to forward the request it will redirect the request to your on-prem adfs server now adfs will prompt the user to enter the username and password provided you have configured form based authentication so there are two ways uh, of getting the user authenticated wherein you can implement single sign-on and form-based authentication the reason why i have chosen form-based authentication for this particular demo so that i can show you each and every step what adfs is doing what login.microsoftonline.com is doing and how come your user is getting authenticated and logged in to portal.office.com adfs will get the credentials verified from your ad and then depending upon the rules the claim rules which are created on your relying party trust it will provide a token to azure active directory now azure active directory will consume those tokens and will create a new token for office 365 now the reason behind this is that when we were discussing uh, more about the authentication process what we found that login.microsoftonline.com is interacting with your adfs on ws fed but when i will be showing you the fiddler trace what you will observe that login.microsoftonline.com is actually sending a jot token to office 365 so these are the two different ways when the entire authentication process gets completed and once I will show you the fiddler trace trust me guys everything will be crystal clear now once adfs has provided a token to azure ad azure ad has consumed that token and provided a new token to portal.office.com user will be able to sign in and the home page of portal.office.com will be displayed to the user so this is about very basic authentication process now when we'll switch and we'll check the entire authentication process with the help of a fiddler trace everything will make more sense so for that what i'll do is i'll open a new tab on my browser and i'll ask fiddler to only capture the traffic that's been going on from this particular video i'll start the capturing and i'll do portal.office.com now, as you can see that the authentication request is redirected to login.microsoftonline.com and this is the common endpoint. Now, when I will type my UPN and press enter, there is a process which will happen and that process is named as home realm discovery, wherein login.microsoftonline.com detects to which endpoint the authentication request has to be sent now the moment i'll click on next enter at the rate conceptswork.com click on next now the moment i'll click on next you will see a redirect on my adfs page now let, now let me tell you how exactly this happened so login.microsoftonline.com has also sent a redirect request to one of its own endpoint and which is this one which is get hyphen credential and if you will see the response let me open this in a notepad and it will make more sense so now login.microsoftonline.com knows what kind of a user has trying to sign in 
and for that what you have to check is the field to where I should redirect this user now for that as you can see I am getting this option of federation redirect URL and it is same which is active directory dot concepts work dot com as you can see here federation redirect URL and if I go back to my PowerShell you can see that Microsoft Office 365 knows that the passive client sign in URL is active directory dot concepts work dot com so this is where the redirection happens and you will be redirected to the ADFS page now ADFS page is asking me to type in my credential I'll do that it will get that validated from Active Directory and then will provide a token to login.microsoftonline.com but there is one more very crucial process that happens under the hood that how come ADFS knows that what claims it has to provide to Office 365 so for that what you can do is you can go ahead and check the claim issuance policy of your ADFS now for that let me just copy this rule in a notepad to explain you in more detail so what I'll do now is I'll let you know what all this rule is about and how come two values are being sent in your token so this rule says that you have to query the UPN of the user user principal name and send it with the claim definition which is schema.xmlso.org forward slash claim forward slash UPN now the next parameter which it has to query is the object GUID and this has to be sent as immutable ID so the first tool is actually going to query your UPN and the object GUID and will be sending that in the token and the second rule which you see here which is uh, actually sending immutable ID as a name identifier so this is something which uh, which is required from protocol perspective that there should be one particular claim that should be named as name identifier on behalf of which a specific profile is being pro displayed in fact to the user so these are the two claims which will be sent the very first one will be UPN the second will be of uh, immutable ID and the immutable ID would be sent as name identifier as well so now there are three things which you have to remember the very first one is where exactly this part will be used which is added as an identifier in the relying party trust how come these two different claims are being sent and immutable ID is being sent as name identifier or not now the moment I will click on sign in there will be two tokens that will get created the process will be quick but I'll stop the capture and I'll explain you step by step so the moment I will click on sign in a token will be provided from ADFS to login.microsoftonline.com login.microsoftonline.com will consume that token and provide a new JOT token to portal.office.com just to show, showcase you guys I have clicked on sign in once the entire process is completed I'm on the home page of portal.office.com I'll stop the capture and I will explain you how exactly these two tokens are exchanged that's all we need I think I have stopped the capture so we were at this particular frame and uh, this frame has routed a token to login.microsoftonline.com and uh, let me check if I can find the token provided by ADFS so as you can see this is the request security token response I'll switch to my notepad plus plus and let me show you this so the very first thing that I would like to show you guys is the address which is URN Federation Microsoft online so this is something which is present in the request which ADFS receives from login.microsoftonline.com and it verifies that whether the specific identifier or whether the specific reliant party is something for which I have any reference 
or not so it is there in the relying part we trust this first part gets validated the second thing which microsoft uh, adfs verifies is the process of checking the claims so likewise you can see that a name identifier is also being sent which is a part of the second rule which says immutable id should be sent as a name identifier you can see that value getting mentioned here as well and you can also see upn of the user which is enter at the red concepts work.com and this is listed here specifically as immutable id so these are the three things which adfs provides to login.microsoftonline.com login.microsoftonline.com will consume this token and provide a new token to portal.office.com and let's just check that last piece as well so for that what you can do is you can go to this particular link and make sure you copy the value of id token just copy this and go to a website named as jwt.io this is a website which actually helps you to decrypt JWT tokens and you will be able to check the claims which are issued in this particular token from a specific idp to the respective application which will be consuming this token now as you can see that this is my upn which is same or which was provided from adfs to login.microsoftonline.com so guys this was all about how the authentication process works with adfs and login.microsoftonline.com and let's just talk about a quick summary what all we have covered so we have checked how to set up federation with office 365 we have checked about the relying party trust property and the most important component is the identifier tab we have checked about the details of the claim rules that are created by default we have checked about the authentication flow and with the help of fiddler trace we have also checked the claims issued by adfs to login.microsoftonline.com if you guys have learned something new it would be really helpful if you subscribe comment in below try doing whatever i have shown in this particular video in your lab if you have any questions please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com and i'll be happy to help you guys thank you so much thanks for your time have a great day Bye bye